Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns. Welcome to 333 Magic 9, where the tarot cards and astrology stars come together to help you by combining the visual messages of the tarot and the energy of astrology, you can be prepared for the opportunities and the challenges that are coming your way this month. I hope you will like this video and also press the little bell for notifications when my new videos come out. The tarot card for the first week of the month is the chariot which represents success and victory. The tarot card for the second week of the month is the Hierophant, which represents accepted tradition. The tarot card for the third week of the month is the Five of Cups, which represents emotional loss. And the tarot card for the last week of the month is the Ace of Cups, which represents new emotional beginnings. Gemini, the tarot card for the first week of the month is the chariot. This is a card of leaving the past and moving ahead to the future. The energy present this week suggests there may be a lot of forward motion. You may be able to see a glimpse into your future potential and your ability to command ideas may grow. So look forward to more success in the future. Now, as we look into the astrology, the month begins with a full moon in the sign of Sagittarius and the seventh house of your chart. Now, it may seem to be a bit counterintuitive to say the month begins as the full moon is thought to be the time of fullness and completion. It is also, though, an opposition and represents opposing forces and emotions. Now, since the opposition is from the first to the seventh house, you will need clarity when dealing with partners or the public. So you need to balance yourself between your needs and their needs. And you need to be cooperative. Now, Venus will enter Leo and your third house of communications and travel. This is a good time to talk to friends and romantic interests. You have creative flair and your ability to in Joy life makes you very attractive. So how about going out on a little romantic side trip? Woo! <laughs> now, as we look at the tarot card for the second week, it is the Hierophant. Now, it shows a high priest on a throne of power. It represents the power of tradition and social structure. It suggests that there may be a need to approach spirituality and life in general in a more open and fluid manner. A rigid approach may need to be modified or adjusted in some way. Now, as we look into the astrology, the second week contains two significant changes. Pluto, the planet of death and resurrection, will retrograde back into Capricorn and your eighth house. And Saturn, will go retrograde in Pisces, and that is a very important placement because it is up in the top of your chart, and that is a career and ambitious area. Now, Pluto in the eighth will force you to reevaluate how you share with others on a deep level. You will have to know what belongs to you and what belongs to them. You may have some powerful psychic experiences. Now, Saturn in the 10th house will expose personal conflicts between family and career responsibilities. You're going to need to balance them, and that can help you bring a positive change into your life. Now, Mercury will enter into your sign. And that is its place of power. So this will help you clarify and organize your mind and your ability to communicate your ideas to others. So take advantage and get organized. The tarot card for the third week of the month is the Five of Cups. It shows a despondent man who is not seeing the future. There may be something that you are sensing deep inside that is troubling you on an emotional level. 
you may be feeling a loss or a personal disappointment. Now, this may be a good time to let go of the past and look in a new direction because there is a bridge to the future and a castle in the distance. So, look ahead. Now, as we look into the astrology, the third week begins with a new moon in your first house of personality. Now, this is an interesting placement for you may become even more communicative than usual. You can connect with people who can satisfy your natural curiosity. So this is a good time to polish your mind, your communication skills, and your ability to analyze and present new information. But you are warned not to get carried away by your ambitions or fantasies, since this lunation is squared to Neptune, and that is up in your 10th house of career. So maintain clarity and act with common sense. Now, the sun will move into your second house of money and resources, suggesting you improve your talents so you can find ways to make more money. But you can also spend more, so don't break the bank. The tarot card for the last week of the month is the Ace of Cups. This is a powerful card on the level of sensual and emotional experiences. It suggests new possibilities and happiness that are gifts of the ever-flowing waters of life. On a higher level, it suggests you may achieve a deeper level of spiritual understanding and power. Now, as we look into the astrology, the month ends with some exciting and confusing energy. Mars, the god of war, is in your third house, and he will square Uranus, the god of chaos, in your twelfth house. Now, this challenges you to be aware of your hidden emotions that may influence your actions. Your thinking may be erratic, and you may say the wrong thing at the wrong time, and it could cost you, and don't be too willful. Now, Mercury in the first house will square retrograde Neptune, and that is up in the 10th house, suggesting confused actions in the career area, which could cause some misunderstanding, and especially be careful with people in power. Don't believe everything you hear. Now, there is a sextile between optimistic Jupiter and controlled Saturn. Now, this may be a bit of a lifesaver, as common sense can help you maintain a sense of reality. Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns, and this is my story. If you are a spiritual seeker, it may help you on your journey. I believe your spiritual development is as important as your religion. If you look at Christianity, it focuses on the life of Jesus. But Jesus was never a Christian. He was Jewish. If this thought intrigues you, you'll enjoy my new book, Light from Water, Freeing Jesus. It's available on Amazon.com and through fine bookstores. And it may help you on your spiritual journey. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like this video, subscribe, and ring the little bell to be notified when new videos come out. And if you'd like to arrange a private psychic and spiritual reading with astrology, just go to my website, internetpsychicreadings.com or professorastrology.com.